Good morning on this Wednesday of Holy Week. We're in the final stretch of Lent now, and I think it might be a useful exercise to take another look at what Lent means to us. Let's start with a reminder of what Jesus experienced when he spent 40 days in the wilderness. This is how the story is related in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, the temptation of Jesus. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For forty days and forty nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No, the scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off! For the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, The scriptures also say, You must not test the Lord your God. Next the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil went away and angels came and took care of Jesus. As we heard, Jesus was tempted while he was in the wilderness as the devil tried to turn him away from God and the ministry that he was called to. But we also heard that Jesus fasted. He gave up food for the entire time he was there. And that's where the tradition of giving something up for Lent comes from. Most of us aren't going to fast in the sense of abstaining from all food, even for, for a short time, let alone 40 days. But there are other things we can do, both as a Lenten discipline and to benefit others and ourselves. It may be a little late now to be thinking about what to give up for Lent, but these things can be done any time or saved up for next year's Lent. Here are 10 ideas you might like to consider. Don't buy anything you don't need. Put the money you would have spent into a jar. You'll be surprised how quickly it builds up. After the 40 days, decide what to do with it. You might want to give all of it to church or to charity, or you might want to split it and keep some to spend or to save. Either way, you win because you gave up something you didn't need anyway. Throw 40 things away for 40 days. Over Lent, Collect 40 things you can give away or throw away. If some of the things can be donated, then do so. If you can recycle them, do that. If they're neither, put them in the trash. You'll declutter your life and your house. Organize your home. Do that cleaning and tidying that, if you're like most of us, you've been putting off way too long. If you think you don't have the time, try spending less time watching TV or reading magazines or whatever else you normally like to do that you can manage with less of during Lent. No gossiping. That means none. If we're honest, we all do it on occasion and most of the time it probably does no harm. But it's one of those things that can become a habit that's hard to break. And the more we do it, the more likely it is that at least sometimes it will hurt someone. And although it's common to think of women doing it, it can just as easily be men or kids. Exercise daily to take care of the body God gave you. If you're already doing so, give yourself a pat on the back. Obviously, age and health come into what you're able to do but do what you can at least to maintain the level of fitness you have or to improve it if you can. And brain exercise is as important as physical exercise. 
don't eat after dinner. This can be a tough one if you're used to having a late snack, but it will be good for your body as well as for your soul. And remember that Jesus couldn't grab a late bite in the wilderness. Consider donating the money you save by not eating that extra food. Give up soda for Lent. This one's harder for some people than others. Again, it will be good for your body, even if you only drink diet soda. And you can drink water instead, flavored if you need to, which is healthier for you. Once again, you can donate the money you save. Notice I didn't say anything about alcohol. I'll leave that entirely up to you. Say three nice things to your spouse and kids daily, or to whoever you live with or meet. You probably already do, but try to think of something different that you don't usually say. If they know it comes from your heart, it will make their day. Replace 30 minutes of TV or screen time with 30 minutes of devotion, which can include prayer, Bible reading, or perhaps watching a morning prayer service. Don't complain or speak negatively. Some of us have more trouble with this than others, but it can be an easy habit to get into and a very hard one to break. Try to catch yourself being negative and stop before it happens. Or if you're too late to stop yourself, apologize and say something positive. Before we close in prayer, let me give you a couple of reminders. First, all the things I mentioned are suggestions. They're things for you to consider, not things you need feel you should do. Second, Jesus fasted for a reason, and we give up things or do new things for the same reason. That reason is to prepare ourselves for ministry, whether it's continuing what we already do or moving into something new. And now let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming into the world to show us what God's love is like. Thank you for loving us, even when we didn't love you. And thank you for giving us another chance when we turn away from you and never losing patience. Amen.